Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Notion Hub and in this video, I'll be showing you the most important tips and tricks for Realme GT Neo 3. By the way, I'll also be posting a dedicated video for the best feature section where I'll be talking about all the features offered by this phone. So definitely check out that video as well. Link will be in the description. With that said, first I'll start off with the navigation gestures. On this phone, it's called as swipe gestures from both sides. And once you turn it on, you get some extra options at the bottom. Make sure you enable switch to previous app toggle and vibrate on back navigation toggle. And once you're done, this is how the navigation gestures work. To go home, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen. For recent apps, you can swipe and hold. Now to go back a step, you can swipe from the left side or the right side and it takes back a step. For Google Assistant, you can swipe from the bottom left corner or bottom right corner diagonally to trigger Google Assistant. And every time you use these gestures or even the back button, you also get a subtle haptic feedback. Besides that, you can also swipe left or right on the bottom of the screen to quickly switch between applications, just like on iOS. Next, we have something called Nearby Share. Now, this is a feature that you can find on almost all the latest Android phones. And using this feature, you can easily share files between your phone and anyone nearby or Wi-Fi. Now, once you turn on the Nearby Share, you need to pick the visibility mode. If you are sharing files with your friends and you have their contacts, then select the contacts option. If you are sharing with someone new, then set the visibility to everyone. Now this particular option, everyone, is only a temporary option. After some time, it will automatically switch to contacts. Anyway, once you have set your visibility or already made your settings, your phone will start looking for people around you who have turned on nearby share. Now all you need to do is select the correct phone and on the receiver end, your friend just need to accept the data. So using this nearby share feature, you can easily transfer files. Next, we can also change fonts on this phone. You can choose between some pre-installed ones or just download the ones you like. Now here's a store for that. There are a lot of free fonts and some pretty good looking paid fonts. Next, I'm going to show you how you can hide files. Now on this phone, there's a feature called privacy safe, which allows you to hide files, any file like documents, video files, music files. You can literally hide any files. Once you enable this feature, you can directly go to the private CF and hide files or else no matter where you are, whether it's the gallery or a file manager, you can select the file and click share and then send it to the privacy CF. And that particular file will be automatically hidden. It's a pretty cool feature that comes built into the phone. Next, we can also hide applications on your phone. Let's say you want to hide some net banking related applications or authenticator applications, then you can do that on this phone. You just go to the settings, hide apps, and from here, just set up the password and the keyword stuff. And once it's done, just select the applications that you want to hide, click OK, and all those applications will be hidden from the default app drawer. Now to open those hidden applications, just open the phone dialer, enter the secret code, and now you can access those hidden applications. By the way, guys, your phone really doesn't actually hide those applications. It'll just hide it from the default home launcher. If you install a new launcher, or if you directly search for those apps in the Play Store, you can still find them. Well, there's no problem with the phone. It's just how the feature works. And honestly, you really can't actually hide apps on your phone. Next, I'm going to show you how you can lock applications. Once again, if you have some security related apps that you don't want others to open easily, then you can lock all those applications. Just go to settings and from the privacy section, you can access the lock apps feature. From here, you can lock all the applications that you want. By the way, we can also use face unlock and fingerprint unlock to unlock those locked applications just for a bit more convenience. If you're going to lock up some important apps like net banking applications or something related to stocks and stuff, then I would recommend you not to use the fingerprint and face unlock features. Better enter the password yourself. Next, we have a new gesture called icon pull down gesture. Now, once you enable this feature on your home screen, you can swipe diagonally on the left side or right side to quickly pull down all the icons near your finger. It's just a quick and easy way to reach out applications just with a single finger. Next, we have swipe down gesture on the home screen. By default, it is set to search or global search. Once you do a swipe down gesture, you can search for application names or even contacts directly from your home screen. I personally suggest you to change it to notification draw. Once you do that, you can do a swipe down gesture to pull down the notification bar, which I think is much more helpful. Next, we got some new live wallpapers. Some are just like videos on loop. Some wallpapers react to your touch and some change depending on the time. For these wallpapers, 
you can just touch and hold the wallpaper for a quick preview. Right now we can only use the install live wallpapers. In future, we might be able to use a regular video as a live wallpaper. Next we have dark mode. You can enable it from the notification toggles or directly from the display settings. And once you enable the dark mode, all the system UI elements change to dark mode. Even some of the stock applications like phone dialer, messaging application also change to dark mode. And even some Google applications like Play Store or YouTube switch to the dark mode automatically. Dark mode helps your phone look much more cooler, helps you save some battery and puts less strain on your eyes at night. Next, I'm going to show you different ways to take a screenshot on this phone. So first we have the normal way where we can use the buttons. Just press the volume down and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. Next we have three finger screenshot gesture. Now this feature is enabled by default. To take a screenshot, you can just swipe down using three fingers and your phone will take a screenshot. It's just like pressing the buttons, but instead of pressing the buttons, you just need to swipe down using three fingers and your phone will take a screenshot. Personally, this is my favorite way to take a screenshot. Next, I'm going to show you how to take a long screenshot. For that, first take a regular screenshot and then click on the preview. Now select scroll. Now you need to scroll the page. And once you're done, you'll get a long screenshot. Finally, we have partial screenshot. To take a partial screenshot, just place three fingers on the screen for a second and then slowly swipe down. Once you do that, you'll get a preview window and then take a partial screenshot. You can also resize this preview window to get an accurate screenshot. Next, I'm going to show you how to disable lock screen magazine or you might even call it dynamic wallpaper on the lock screen. First, here's a quick preview of the lock screen and every time you lock your phone or every time you come to the lock screen, we see a different wallpaper. Some people like it, some people don't, especially I personally don't like it. So if you're like me and if you want to disable it, this is how you can disable it from settings. And now here's the lock screen once again. And no matter how many times you come to the lock screen, we will have a fixed wallpaper. Next, I'm going to show you some camera gestures. First, we have touch. Once you enable this feature, we can take a picture by just touching the preview screen. It works for both the rear camera and even for selfies. Next, we have the palm gesture, which only works for the front camera and it's great for taking selfies. Just enable it and then show your palm to the front camera and your phone will take a picture in just two seconds. Next, I'm going to show you how to trigger Google Assistant with the power button. Just enable this toggle and now press and hold the power button to trigger Google Assistant. If you are using navigation gestures, this is pretty useful. Next, we have some important screen of gestures. We have things like double tap to wake. We can also draw a note to open the camera application. Next, we can draw a V to turn on the flash. We also have more like music controls and custom shortcuts. But most of the time, I just draw V to turn on the flash. And to turn it off, we can press the power button. Next, we have a pretty cool shortcut to start or open split screen mode. This feature is enabled by default. Just make sure this particular toggle is enabled. And if it is enabled, you can just swipe up using three fingers to open the current application in a split screen mode. Now this is an Oppo phone, it's not like other phones. So some of the applications will not support this feature. With that said, most of the applications, especially third party applications, do support split screen mode. Next, I'm going to show you digital well-being. Now this is a feature from Google and you can find it in settings. This feature analyzes your phone's usage and gives you a complete report. It shows you how many times you've unlocked your phone, how many notifications you've got, how much time you're using your phone and which apps you're using the most. So with all this information, you can know your usage and you can also limit your usage using this feature, which is a pretty cool thing. So let's say if you don't want to watch videos on YouTube for more than one hour in a day, we can put up such restrictions using this feature. Next, we have wind down. This is another feature from Google. 
which will help you sleep faster at night. Using this feature, we can schedule our phone to turn on grayscale mode and do not disturb mode automatically at a specific time. This is something I would definitely recommend you to try. Next, I'm going to show you how you can change your default apps, whether you want to change your default launcher, default browser or anything. For that, we need to first go to settings. Once you're in settings, select app management, then select default apps. Now from this page, you can change your default launcher, default SMS application, browser and so on. I would definitely recommend you to change your default browser to Google Chrome. Next, I'm going to show you how to display the battery percentage on the status bar. For that, go to settings, then select notification and status bar and then Enable this toggle. Once you do that, we can see the battery percentage on the status bar. In the same way, if you want to see the network usage on the status bar, enable this toggle. Next, I'm going to show you how to record the screen on your phone. For that, first go to the toggles. And if you can't find the screen recording option, you need to click this button over here and search in the extra toggles. We have a dedicated toggle called start screen recording. Just bring it up. And now we can start video recording just by using this toggle. Just click it and screen recording should start in 3 seconds. If your phone asks for any permissions, just grant them all. Next, I'm going to show you how to stop applications from automatically restarting in the background. For that, you need to first open phone manager. You can find it on the home screen or in your app drawer. Once you open it up, select Privacy Permissions, then select Startup Manager. Now from this page, we can start or stop applications from automatically restarting in the background. Personally, I'll enable this toggle for apps like Truecaller, WhatsApp or Instagram and disable it for everything else. So guys, these are the most important tips and tricks for your phone. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on best features. Link will be in the description. Now with that said, if you're planning to buy this phone, please use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. If you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.